thank you. Hey, Owen. How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? Good. Hey, guys. The question that Paul asked. Oh, you sitting there, Jamie? Jamie. Jamie. So basically, if we were to do a two or two fifty or three hundred, basically you're just messing that up. Ooh, well, hello there. I'm trying. It's been a long day. Well, come here, man. Just saying. How you doing, stranger? I don't know how you. Doing fine. Doing fine. I think it's hard. Don't do something like that. I don't care. I don't even want anything. I just want to get through and survive it all. As long as, as long as we get the whole family together, I'm tickled pink. We missed you at the last meeting. Uh -huh. Yeah. Short answer. At the community center? No, thank you. Question for you. I'll swing it on. The rain is going to be the same this year. I'll check the new Can I give this to you, Ray? You want to go to the paper? And one of the Got it right here in the uh, uh, copies for you and the other ones for us. I'll stick my head before I'll be nosy. I'll go in there and try to get it. Got it. All right. Oh, okay. Still on there, right? Yeah. Okay. And there. Damn, I thought it was right here. <laughs> Christmas bonus or something. I'll get that to Dawson. Oh, yeah. Yeah, folks, I'll see you. Mark's holding all the money. We got a big safe. Oh, that's good. Okay, that's meeting over. Oh, you better get on, man. Where are these guys at? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, I get it. Looks good. I'll have a, I'll have a re look at it. Thanks. No problem. I want it to be right. Yeah, one part of it says party instead of part. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Does that mean we get parties? Yeah. Yeah, we have, to have a party. Ready? All right, we'll call to order uh, December 19th uh, Board of Works agenda, uh, meeting. Get a roll call, please. Member Paul Seymour, Jr. Here. Member Alan Calloway. Here. Fire Chief Donnie Tremaine. Here. Police Chief Donnie Combs. Here. EMS Director Bobby Mills. Here. Utility Director Olin Clausen. He's here somewhere. City Attorney Del Walden. Here. Mayor Kelly Milan and myself. All right, any announcements? Uh, I don't have any. I don't have anything. <coughs> All right, then I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the meet, previous meeting. Approved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
motion will carry. Committee reports, Fire Chief Johnny Tremaine. Uh, a couple things. Uh, if you haven't been by the firehouse, uh, please do. The doors are up. Today they did get them all sealed up. Uh, new seals on and uh, I think it's going to be a good investment. Um, there is a couple issues, a couple chip or cracked glass. They're aware of it and they're going to replace it. Okay. And also, Mayor, I would ask if you could swear in Alex Haith tonight. Uh, full-time part sure you want to do that now yep <laughs> um, what we'll do is I'll Do you sign for Tyler? Or? I can. Okay. Raise your right hand, please. I, Jeffrey A. Hayes. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. In the state of Indiana. In the state of Indiana. That I will honestly. Faithfully, faithfully and impartially and impartially discharge the duties of my trust discharge the duties of my trust as full-time firefighter as full-time firefighter in and in and for the said city of Lawrenceburg Indiana according to the law according to the law and to the best of my knowledge and ability by those present Bind myself as principal. Bind myself as principal. Unto the state of Indiana. Unto the state of Indiana. And the amount required by law. And the amount required. We got some folks here from the committee that's uh, that chose the. Uh, Mr. Haft as our next firefighter and um, he came from a, a group of very strong applicants um, so we expect a lot of a lot of good things out of Jeff and I'm glad you're here okay next committee report we'll have uh, police chief Don Combs Mayor, the only thing I have tonight is ask the Board of Works to uh, sign what we passed last meeting, the SOPs. I just have some signature pages. Okay. So they can get that finished. Okay. That's all I have, Mayor. All right. EMS Director Bobby Mills. Yes, Mayor. <coughs> the uh, run totals for the month of November was 142 calls. And just let the board get, be aware, I will be talking to the city attorney about the uh, county contract for 2017. Okay. Rush on us this year. Um, I know you got a. Is, has uh, Julie's grandson any no update? Change. No change. Okay. All right. Bye. Okay. New business, uh, Dell Weldon Union contract. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, in your packets, the for Board of Works and for City Council, we have the uh, union contract. Uh, first of all, and this is, uh, is the final version of the contract that was negotiated this year. Um, it was negotiated uh, over a course of a couple different sessions. Those sessions were attended by representatives from uh, the local union as well as their uh, BAs, uh, Human Resources, the Mayor, myself. A representative from City Council, um, uh, LMU through Owen Clausen and Mr. Messmore is present. Um, and this uh, contract, which was negotiated between the parties uh, through open negotiation, was voted uh, upon and ratified uh, by the union. And so now I would ask uh, for a vote of the Board of Works uh, to equally ratify the negotiated uh, labor union contract as you see in your packets. Okay. All right, I need a motion. So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
Motion will carry. The next item is the employee handbook. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes, also you'll find uh, in your packets the employee handbook. This employee handbook uh, was drafted and amended uh, through a lot of hard work by Jenny Felix, uh, who did uh, just a tremendous job on the employee handbook, worked very hard on this. The employee handbook is referenced in the uh, labor union contract, and the labor union contract is, of course, referenced in the employee handbook. The nature of all employee handbooks are to uh, codify the uh, rules and regulations concerning employment. However, it's important to note that uh, part of the union negotiation uh, and part of the contract and the handbook are that the uh, union uh, contract controls uh, in situations where there's any kind of conflict between the handbook or where the handbook is silent. So these two documents uh, operate hand in hand. Um, this is the final version as uh, created by Jenny Felix. And so you just ask for a vote from the Board of Works to accept and ratify uh, the employee handbook, will, which will then uh, apply to uh, all employees of the city. Okay. Any, any questions? Yeah. I'll entertain a motion to accept the employee handbook or approve the employee handbook. Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion will carry. It's all the new business I have, unless you all have something. Under old business, uh, Mr. Weldon, the salary ordinance for 2017. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, what you'll find in your packets uh, is the uh, salary ordinance, which you've already passed. This ordinance was amended to reflect the 2% raises that were negotiated as part of the uh, labor union negotiations. And so this ordinance um, and the uh, pay schedule reflected therein uh, is exactly the same as the one that was passed prior. Uh, except for it reflects the 2% uh, increase across the board uh, and that's been verified by uh, the union that was part of their uh, review was to make sure that the salary ordinance matched the uh, wage increases uh, negotiated and, and Jenny Felix did that on behalf of the city uh, through HR so <clears throat> the only thing I would ask for would just be a vote uh, to approve the salary ordinance as, as it is amended. Okay. It includes the two percent on the on the rate wages. Okay. Yes, sir. Your Honor. All right. Any questions on that, guys? No, sir. All right. I'll entertain a motion to accept the salary ordinance as proposed. So moved. Second. <coughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? That motion will carry. Thank you, Your Honor. I need a motion to uh, accept the claims for approval. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion will carry. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. Favor? Opposed? Motion will carry. Utility board as soon as we're seated. Lights on. Okay. Yeah. Sun lamp, baby. Sun lamp here. <laughs> Off my bald head. What are these? Yeah, for the SOP and the rest of the council has to sign. Okay. No. Okay. All right, we'll open up the uh, December 19th utility board meeting. Can I get a roll call, please? Member Paul Seymour, Jr. Here. Member Tony Abbott. Here. Member Aaron Cook. Here. Member Mel Davis. Here. Member Randy Abner. Here. Utility Director Olin Clausen. Present. City Attorney Del Weldon. Here. Mayor Kelly Milan. Here. And myself. All right, any announcements, Olin? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I've got one announcement. The uh, Customer Appreciation Day is going to be Thursday. The giveaway is going to be Thursday. So people still have time to come into the office and register for that, or they can do it online or like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, all that. Um, we'll be giving away four turkeys, four hams, and that will be uh, around noon on Thursday. So I encourage everybody that hasn't to um, enroll. You just need to be a customer of the utility. LMU's going high tech, huh? Yeah. All right. Okay, uh, any other announcements? No, Your Honor. Okay. I entertain a motion to accept, uh, approve the minutes of the previous meeting. So moved. 
Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion will carry. Any committee reports? Uh, I've got a couple committee reports. I'm going to put Mike Harper on the spot since he's in the audience to talk to us about Walker Substation and uh, some of the issues we had with it over the weekend. Well, this is Mike Harper, work for Larsburg Utilities. Thank you, Owen. Um, some of the current problems we're having with the substation is it's a little outdated. And we're currently looking into replacing some of the things in it. But as of right now, uh, Sunday we had a switch go bad on the 34-5 side. And we have a few things tied together. So we're currently working on that. And uh, I think what Owens want me to get at here is we really need to revamp this sub and look into other ways of doing it. Does this include the, the move, moving the substation? Well, no, that's uh, sorry, that's, that's one of the options that we've discussed was potentially relocating the substation. It has a lot to do with uh, timing and what the new owners of the port property decide gotcha. they want to do. Okay. Um, some of the limitations that Mike's touching on, the, the regulators that are there for Walker substation are not rated. Um, power transformers are big enough, but the regulators aren't rated to transfer a substantial amount of load onto that substation from other substations. It's the bottleneck that exists. Um, we had to do a little bit of switching and transfer most of that load up to the hospital substation. So we have a lot of capacity at that substation, a great deal of capacity, but we've got some, some pieces of equipment that are, um, they pale in comparison to what they can do if, if you were to contrast them with the other substations. Well, it does make sense. I mean, if you guys, I mean, we're expecting more load to be going to that oh, substation. Oh, we're definitely expecting more load. We so it makes sense to, to upgrade it, right? Yes. Um, now, let me ask you, if when you upgrade things like this, because you got to educate me here, but is there an outage at that point? Um, no. We will we'll de-energize that substation, and we'll transfer all load to, to yeah. Hollywood substation and hospital substation. That way, we can work inside of it safely. Okay. What was that station built, Mike? 96 or 97, <coughs> if I'm not mistaken. 96. 96. 96. So we've picked up quite a bit of load since that. We just haven't we haven't looked into doing anything with the regulators till now. Yeah. And we did have, we had a couple other uh, incidents that were unrelated to our system other than it affected our system at Greendale Substation. I uh, try to keep Utility Service Board appraised of what was happening there. Get a plan on that. Um, Care we 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 have a plan. Yeah, we've got a plan to deal with that. I just don't know if Duke agrees with our plan. <laughs> uh, we are looking into options to to try to mitigate the problems related to that substation. These are these are problems that have been going on um, in the community for some time. They were happening uh, when Mel was at the helm. Uh, Duke is a very large ship with a very small rudder. They don't maneuver quickly, and so getting them to to uh, to do things is, is a bit difficult, but I do believe that we're making headway. We're working with uh, Hollywood Casino and Pin Gaming. Um, we've been sending some strongly worded emails to the right people, apparently, and, and they're starting to, to move on those things. So it really comes down to reliability and doing what's right for the customers uh, so they don't experience these, these nuisance outages that really don't have anything to do with our system. We've got a great system. It's unrelated to us, but it affects us. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The really can't jump out there and do a whole lot of planning for the port until you know what's going to be here. So you're a little ways off from that, right? We are, and and so that everyone understands, when we talk about uh, upgrading that substation, we're looking at a few different options. Option uh, one, just the minimal things, the regulator banks, maybe some some uh, more up to date switching. Um, You've been pretty good about bringing things to us and itemizing them and letting us know mm -hmm. some costs. So do you have that plan here? I'm actually working on those those options to present to you all um, and, and sooner rather than later. The other thing I'd like to say was, you know, I got calls Sunday, and it amazed me because I got calls within three minutes exactly as when the electric went out, and it amazes me that people won't even give our guys time to get the phone call and get downtown and do things because <laughs> I guarantee you that the electric was back on in 23 minutes. So I don't 25 have days a back. problem, it, it, but to make things better, if you come forth with the plan, I mean, I'm all for it, but
but I just don't want to redesign this thing to the no. point to where in four or five years we're tearing it all back out. But it sounds like you're just kind of improving things a little bit to, to ease us along here. Yeah, and, and the things that we would be investing in would be would be uh, pieces of equipment that, equipment that would would easily be moved to a new site. So a modernized switch house with controls could be uh, moved just like the power transformers. But like I said, we're, we're looking at a few different options. One of them is to do nothing and lump along. The other is just you know what the bare minimum of investment that we need to make to utilize the, the, the substation that we currently have. And uh, on your comment about the, the length of time that we experience the outage, um, I think everybody understands that when they show up to an outage, they have a di you know they have a, an obligation to kind of patrol things somewhat, make sure that we don't have a vehicle that's into something, and and at least do a cursory look to make sure that we're not closing in on something that would that would cause further damage or risk someone's life or well-being. And so I, I think they do a phenomenal job. I know that the uh, the REMCs um, their outage times are much much longer than than City of Lawrenceburg. And IOUs, you know, you're talking hours, not minutes. It's, it's just uh, we have a very, very um, skilled group of individuals, and we've got a, an excellent system. City of Lawrenceburg has an excellent uh, utility infrastructure system that really everybody should be proud of. So. Okay. Anything Thank else? You. Anything else, guys? No, sir. <coughs> Any new business? No, Your Honor. Old business? No, Your Honor. I will entertain a, a motion to approve the claims. So moved. Second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion will carry. Do you have a hand up? Yes, sir. I'd like that. My name is Scott McAdams. I'm the steward for the electric department and our utilities. And as we discussed in the utility negotiations, I believe most of the utility board members are aware we are asking for an additional uh, appropriation of money and our wages uh, due to the skill set and how far we fell behind from our skill set. And I was just entertaining to see if we could have any discussion about that. Uh, we're not, I wouldn't think we'd do it tonight, but we could have a separate meeting to do it with the utility board if you'd like. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out how to get on the board so we can do this and, and get something rolling because as we said, it was an amendment. We we're going to do an amendment to the con to the contract to add this and. Well, what, what we would need, though, this guy would I would want these guys to have all the information ahead of time, so they know what you're going to present. Okay. Um, so then they can do their their homework, and then give you guys a shot to present it. Okay. But tonight wouldn't be the right venue to be doing that. Nobody nobody would even know what you're talking about. Can uh, can we request that the information be got to us and? And we make a commitment that we will do this by the end of January. That gives us two meetings in January to schedule this. Can we do that? That's fine. That, that's January would be no problem. Is that a commitment you can live with? That's a commitment. I can. You guys agree? Yeah. I mean, I, mean I, I just don't represent myself. I represent a department. Well, I so I want to make sure my guys and, and we were, you know, we want to make sure we get something done on this. Well, so. I remember in the negotiations, we, I mean, we promised them we'd talk to them. Yep. And December's done, so we either got the first meeting in January or the second. So I'm just giving people the holidays, and if if you guys can get us the information, then it'll be sometime, if we can do it sometime in January. Either get it to, to Owen or get it to Kerry. Okay. And then when after, we, after I get the information, we'll, we'll set up the meeting. All right, sounds All right. good. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion will carry. We'll open up the council meeting. Stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you all for being here once again. Um, announcements, uh, board, board reports, streets, alley, and curbs. Mr. Cook.
to always curb. Um, I was wondering. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold it. Hold it. Okay. Hold it. Roll call. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm screwing up here. Roll call. Please. Member Paul Seymour Jr. Here. Member Tony Abbott. Here. Member Aaron Cook. Here. Member Mel Davis. Here. Member Randy Abner. Here. Police Chief Donnie Combs. Here. Fire Chief Johnny Tremaine. Here. EMS Director Bobby Mills. Here. Utility Director Olin Clausen. Present. City Attorney Del Weldon. Here. Mayor Kelly, Mo Kelly Milan and, Here. sorry, Here. and myself. Okay. Now we'll go with announcements. Streets, Alley, and Curbs, uh, Mr. Cook. Committee reports. What's that? Streets, Alley, Curbs? No, it's under announcement. Okay. Yeah, um, do we have do we ever get anything figured on the street sweeper schedule yet? Yes, uh, I got what I did get was a, uh, uh, a list of the maps of the streets, but I've asked them to put it into a, a, a spreadsheet form so we'll know which days which streets. Because all I had then was a picture. Okay. Because um, I got a resident here. He's here this evening. Mr. Leland was um, wondering. You know, because we talked about that last time we here about a month ago. Um, yep. The signs he said the signs do not reflect the reality of street sweeping times he said this the city is sweeping on monday and wednesday instead of monday and friday and then um he said that the city needs to look into the two hour um, parking because this is a residential area not a business district as in the past so. what do you mean by that steve the city signs are ancient no, I'm about the two-hour parking. We agree with you, street sweeper. We're, we're, we're going to get you that squared that's away. That's my but. main concern. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think when I moved in there, they put the same old signs they had up, but new ones. Okay. Uh, that had two-hour parking. It's a residence. It's. I think the two-hour parking is okay for a business dress. Oh, I didn't realize it was down at your down at the townhouses. They've got two or three signs down. Yeah, there. they shouldn't be there. No, that's that's okay. I'm that's sorry. Just one minor issue. The big issue, in my opinion, is uh, not the street street sweeping times. It's that our residents, whom we tried to convince, they have plenty of parking in the back. There's no consequences for them. Well, we yeah. discussed that, and the only thing we thought of was ticketing people, and we didn't really want to go that route. I know. I know. But uh, what we did a few years ago, and uh, Aaron helped me, we, we gave people information about it. But we've had like four new residences that have bought into the place. Oh, they okay. don't know the rules. Okay. They're ignoring the the street uh, signs. What he's talking about is we put some like something, maybe a little more serious, like maybe a not just a note in their door, which Aaron did. Would like something for those residents to know that they need to move their vehicles. What if what if we did this? And and I'll ask Aaron if it's okay with him since it's his area. But okay, if we. It, number one, we need to get the signs to reflect what we're doing. And the actual okay. times. Exactly. So and and we'll do our best to... Until you find out what the times are. Right. And we'll do our best to stick to the times. But, you know, times generally, you know, how that goes. But but the thing, what we could do is get something uh, printed that came from, say, my office and to, to tell each of the residents that, that, that is what I'm looking we, for. we expect them to have their, their vehicles moved at the time of the sweeping you know don't, or don't make any demands no i wouldn't uh, i'll tell them the other way steve's gonna steve's gonna you know, you know charge one, them or something we have one residence that refuses to move. Oh, okay <coughs> the other ones once they get a notice be fine you, they'll move and okay. i think this resident would too so okay i'm not looking for tickets or okay just look we don't give any <laughs> hey i'm just looking to clean up the city and i walked around with my dog today every day and uh there's a lot of things that could be done this is just a step yeah. <coughs> i'm not going to complain about anything else i'll bring it up at a later time you do that hold, hold our feet to the fire all right we'll get that taken care of aaron anything else um 
Nope, that's it on streets, always curbs. All righty. Finance, Mr. Abbott. Uh, I've got a few questions. Uh, on page 9, Lawrenceburg Main Street, reimbursement for kiosks. What's going on with the kiosks? Oh, you want to know what's going on with it? Yeah, before we okay. pay for them. Here's, here's what we did, or we found out. Uh, I attend their meetings. Um, I Personally, I, I think we were sold a bill of goods. And I'll be pretty up front and blank in the things about so. it. These particular kiosks did not operate under a, a, the window system that we were that we were normally operating under, so it all had to be changed out and redone. So everything had to be rewritten as far as the programming. Okay. Um, obviously, um, I, that's why I mean that's why I mean by by saying I think we got sold a bill of goods. I don't think we got sold. We were under the understanding. If you were under the understanding that I was under, it was something we were going to be able to plug in. Input our materials into it based upon the, the operating system that we were utilizing and move on. And that was not at all the facts. So are we not doing these? Oh, no, now? we're doing them. It's just taking longer. They're changing it, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So have we already paid for them? Oh, yeah, we had paid for a portion of it anyway. Yeah, I think a huge portion of it. Yeah. Well. I guess we'll hold off the rest of the payment till it's done. Uh, I would. I, I don't. I don't. I didn't want to pay him a dime after I found this out, but it was already too late. Okay. Uh, and you have to excuse me. I mean, I worked a lot, and I didn't get a chance to go through all these, so I got a couple of questions here. Sure. Um, and this one I'll let Aaron uh, brought to my attention. The Hollywood Casino. It's on page 18, number 15199. 18. It's the uh, LFD Christmas bank the banquet. It was paid out of death benefits, Johnny? It's paid out of our donation. And I think it's laid in death benefits. Okay. But it's actually our donation. Ready? There's another one here. DuPont, okay, uh, page 22, number 15276. DuPont Hotel Project. Owner LLC travel expense hotel confirmation thousand three hundred and ninety four dollars DuPont yeah that's what it says DuPont hotel project uh -huh. owner LLC page 22 yes page 22 one five two seven six that was a hotel confirmation it was a hotel stay I think it was DuPont Hotel? It was, it was, it's, it's, that was the, on what was on the W9, but it's actually a hotel. I think it might be at Hilton or one of the hotels. DuPont, sir. We have to write the check to whoever the actual is company is yeah, oh, listed on, on the w, w9. It's on the W9. Right. Okay. We can get you the date and stuff for that if okay. you want it. I just, I, I didn't recognize the name and I just thought it was kind of strange. I didn't recognize it either. All right, now, one more. Treasurer of the state promotional six hundred fifty dollars. That's right below it. One five two seven eight. What's that? <coughs> promotional to the treasurer of the state. It's part of the uh, police budget, isn't it? One one of three seven. This is why we do this before the meeting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> they can pull the claims and tell you. Yep. Well, we can find out about that, and that's all I've got. Other than that, everything is fine. I, I had a few questions too, but it's, sure. it's um, I think mine's just the, the, where the line came from. There's a BZA member for December. All of them say Board of Zoning Appeals, BZA member December, and the payments are taken out, but one of them. No. Instead of taking out the BZA, it's coming out of health insurance. I've seen that. I just on page a ten. The rest of them are all say BZA, BZA. But when you get, <coughs> get to the last one, it says health insurance. I don't know if that, that was a mistake. That probably was a, a typo. But I seen I seen that. I think a few other things like that. Here. I mean, that can easily be fixed with a CUE. Oh. And then.
you know, there's a, there's a few death benefits, but I guess they're all from the for the fire department party. Yeah, I'll, the death benefit is it was set up originally death benefit slash donations account, and what it was was um, years ago there was money if you got your 20 years or you died in the line of service you got paid the death benefit. Well, we under the advisement of UMPA, probably three years ago, we paid all everybody out that was entitled to that just to get rid of it, and then we put the remaining balance into this non-reverting fund, into this fund, and that's where all the donations go. That's how it got Okay. Yeah, yeah, I just didn't know if it was a mistake like the other one or not. The, um, two more. The, the next one's on page 26, Suzanne, okay. and it's um, the name the name of the payee it's about 10 from the bottom it says all about doors and it looks like you're paying for a pickup truck from them it says ha half a pickup truck payment all for night for nineteen thousand dollars oh, see that one that's in a, that's fire oh. yeah in our fire oh okay that's, that's, that's paying half the doors your point you're pointing it out there. And then next year, Bobby will pay the other half because his was a budget. Oh, I was thinking it's for like a pickup it, truck it for the city. It's just labeled. Okay. okay. All right. That, that's all it has. I'll we'll make sure there's the right categories. That's an NR fire. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anything else, guys? No. Yeah. no. All right. Thanks. All right. Uh, Parks and Playgrounds, Paul Seymour, Jr. Everything's good. I owe Miss Holcraft a visit uh, since the last meeting. Okay. It's been busy and the weather's been a little bad and I didn't want to get her down there in the cold weather in the park. But no problem. I'll you didn't want to go in the cold weather. Is that what you said? Uh, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, all, I'm, get, I'm following her in age. I hope I stay behind you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be there, for, be there for his five foot of snow. She'll yeah. make it. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? else? All right. Uh, fire, Randy? The only thing I got is I, I was down uh, looking over the doors or Johnny's new half of a truck today, and uh, things are looking pretty good. For a half a truck, right? Yeah, it looked right. pretty good down there. <laughs> All okay. Right. okay. All right, uh, I'll accept the motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. So I moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion will carry. Committee reports, Fire Chief uh, Johnny Tremaine. All I have, just want to wish everybody happy holidays. Thank you. Police Chief, Donnie Combs. Um, I would just ask the council to sign that paper. But, uh, there's three sessions on that. If they could do that, and I'll pick that up at the meeting on that. I'll see that we approved last month, um, or the last meeting. Um, <coughs> just want to pull the council with our security detail. The hospital's going very well. Good. Uh, it's going really well. Um, uh, good response. some you know little things that we can work on up there to you know before everybody gets used to everything so, are also utilizing our quick response team uh, when we have to uh, we really don't want to but that is being utilized so uh, other than that we did have an OD what last week Tony two of them Too many. Okay. Um, EMS Director Bobby Mills. Just the uh, run totals were in front of them. And uh, Merry Christmas to all. <coughs> Same to you. All right. Under new business, I got one to add in there, guys. I'm, I'm sorry. Last meeting, we talked about <coughs> helping the uh, uh, Tiger football team and uh, um, a lady soccer team with uh, uh, some cost of the rings, the state championship, uh, <coughs> the, uh, the rings, the runner up rings. Right. And what we had asked, or you had asked of me, was to uh, ask the school how much they have collected and then come back to us with a total to see if we'd be willing to, to handle that total or what we would be able to, willing to do. I've asked Coach Kanega to come tonight and he's going to give us those numbers so we have those in front of us. And thank you, Mayor Milan, and thank you, Council. Um, you need a microphone? Probably not. <laughs> 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 Uh, first off, uh, thank you guys for all the support. Uh, 
it was an outstanding fall for Lawrenceburg High School um, in general in all of our sports between uh, volleyball, boys and girls, soccer, and then um, football, all of those winning sectional championships, and then um, the girls soccer competing in the state finals, and then football as well. Uh, we were the only school in the state of Indiana to have two teams uh, participate in the state finals. Uh, so that was a great accomplishment uh, for not only Lawrenceburg High School, but the community. And I think you guys were able to see it as well as uh, all of us at Lawrenceburg and the schools, the support from the local businesses and uh, the community. So it was neat to see. And okay. there was a lot of folks at both the soccer state finals and the uh, football state finals. Uh, the community showed up and really supported uh, those individuals and teams. So uh, thanks uh, to the community and everybody for that. Um, this was brought up uh, between Mr. Gailey and uh, Mr. Vogel saying our, the Lawrenceburg Athletic Director um, speaking to Mayor Milan to get the cost and everything. We did receive our invoices and some things today um, that would help us get a tally. Uh, the first thing that I want to make everybody aware of that myself, our superintendent and the, and the AD thought it would be very important for our, our kids um, to have some skin in the game as far as helping pay for some of the ring costs themselves. Um, you know, sometimes young kids, if they don't have anything invested in it or their family, it may not uh, mean as much. But um, the cost for the total ring um, for the uh, football, and hopefully you'll be able to understand this, there's, there's two different costs because the soccer ring obviously was ordered at a different time and then the soccer ring. So it's two different times that these rings were ordered. Um, but the football cost of the ring was $130. Um, we're ordering um, 79 at that cost, which is $10,270. Um, and then there's some discounted rings that the company's given us for $97 since we're ordering a large amount. That was $582. Um, the cheer team, um, obviously, they were crucial in this as well, so we obviously put them on as well as getting rings. Um, didn't want to leave them out. Um, 130, 15 of those ladies got those at 1950. And then the pendants, um, what a pendant is, it's the top of the ring um, that the cheerleaders will be able to have or any lady that wanted that, that was $873. <coughs> the soccer rings, as I mentioned, were just a little more... Um, they were $142. We got 27 of those for the players. Um, $3,834. Um, the coaches' rings, obviously it's a different ring. Um, all their co most of their coaches are males. Um, $151, that was $453. So the total for um, all the rings um, for all the athletes, coaches, support staff, those uh, that are involved, um, was $17,962 for all the rings. Um, we were able to um, get some other financial help. Um, UCB uh, donated $1,000 to each program for the boys and girls. Um, the athletic department gave 1000 to the girls soccer program and then they gave 2000 to the football program just based off of the numbers to try to equal that out. Um, also, we've asked each individual um, that's getting the ring to pay $30. Um, so the contribution from outside support and the kids is $9,500. Um, and the total ring cost um, was $17,962. So that leaves us with a balance of $8,462. Um, and I have the Excel sheet for you. Um, I also have a picture. Of, I don't have a picture of the soccer ring yet. Um, Coach Off was not able to get that to me. But I also have a picture of the uh, football ring. Um, so those are the numbers. So total ring cost was seventeen nine six two um, from outside support and the kids ninety five hundred balance eight thousand four hundred sixty two dollars. Thanks, Ryan. Um, any questions for Coach Kinnear? No, I'd like to make a motion. What's the motion there, young man? We pay $8,462 to the Lawrenceburg Athletic Department for the balance of the cost of the rings and pendants. 
Okay. I'll second that motion. Got a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion will carry. Thank you guys very much. Uh, we appreciate everything that you guys do for us and the school, and it's awesome to work here. Come back. <laughs> come back next year. Yeah. We yeah. Are. <laughs> There's that. You just Thanks. Need it. All right. Let's see it. That'll work. Thank you very much. Appreciate your support. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. What's that? Back to state. Yeah, we hope. <laughs> What'd you say, Jamie? Back to state. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. You, you know those days. Yes. All right. Okay. Next item, uh, Suzanne Orndorff, uh, encumbrances. Uh, thank you, Mayor. In everybody's packages, you should have the encumbrances for 2017. These are per state board of uh, accounts. They must be approved by council vote at the last meeting of the year, which is this meeting. They're all projects that are either unfinished or not yet started. I think a majority of them you had requested, though, as a board. Mm -hmm. Okay. All unspent funds for these projects should be encumbered into the next year budget uh, just to continue the funding. You have a list of them there. I think Mr. Clark's here. Mr. Todd's here. One of the projects is, is Carl's. I think that's the um, most perf. perf yeah. yeah. Right. They're here if you have any questions. But we do need a, a motion by the board to go ahead and approve that. I'd like to make a motion that uh, <coughs> this is approved and we be move forward with all the projects. We're finishing them up in 2017. Now, can I get a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion will carry. Bill Weldon, Union Handbook. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, as we uh, brought up with the uh, Board of Works, we're going to bring up the same item with the uh, Council. What you have in your packets and what you've been able to review um, are, are, is the final product, the finished uh, version of the Union negotiations. Uh, the, Jamie's here, and we see some other people here that are involved in that process. Um, it was a very positive process. It was a rather lengthy negotiation, but this is a result of a, a really great and positive uh, collaboration between our uh, labor union and uh, the members that I mentioned. HR, Mr. Seymour was here representing, uh, was there representing council, Mr. Messmore and the mayor, obviously, and Jenny Felix. And so, uh, as I stated before, the labor union has voted to approve this version of the contract as the final version. And we would ask for a vote uh, for council to likewise approve the labor union contract. So moved. Can I get a second on the approval of the hand or the uh, contract? Second. All those in favor and say hi. Aye. aye. Opposed. Aye. Motion will carry. Union aye. handbook. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. As we again, as we discussed with uh, Board of Works, what you see in your packets is the final version of. The employee handbook. This is again a document that is in support of or in addition to the labor union contract. And, and what you'll notice is that in the employee handbook, it references the labor union contract and vice versa with the contract referencing the employee handbook. An employee handbook is a contract by law, um, it's, it's a, a unilateral expression of the uh, conditions of employment by the city. Uh, again, this is a, a result of a lot of hard work by Jenny Felix. She did just a wonderful job on this. Again, the union contract specifically trumps anything within the handbook, but they really work together to make sure that we comply with all the uh, regulations that we're held to and also uh, to the regulations that we hold our employees to. So what I would ask for, Your Honor, is, is a vote uh, from council to approve the, the uh, employee handbook in its final version. Can I bring up a few things about that? Yes, sir, Mr. Cook. On page 17, some of it might be typos. It says um, relatives defined by one. It says parent of step parent. That's probably supposed to be or. Is that near the top? Okay. It, in the middle we, yeah we found uh, we've got like seven typos yeah. I, I've got uh, that uh, mr. Callaway identified as well I don't know if that was one of them but yours was in the union contract okay and I'll get that to because that, cause that changes sorry. the meeting so that's that's why I highlight that and then um, <coughs> on down this is a question about um, elected officers because it says here certification requirement 
Each elected officer must annually certify in writing, subject to the penalty penalties for perjury that the officer has not violated the statute. Each officer must submit that certification to the Human Resource Director no later than December 31st. Is that something that we have to do? or? We do, and we actually do that uh, at the beginning of, of every year. We fill out, in addition to the conflict of interest forms, we fill out a nepotism form, and Jenny keeps that on file. Okay, the next one has another uh, another certification requirement um, about a third of the way down there, right above medical examinations. The next uh, page, 18? Yeah. Okay. Um, right above that, it's a certification requirement. Is that the same thing, or is that another one? Um, I think that's just same thing yeah, I think that would refer to um, that would be the same thing that's that would be included within the, the one ahead of it the nepotism policy and the nepotism waiver um, that could also be covered by a conflict of interest disclosure. Okay. Um, I'm not sure I think if that would, was or not. Yeah, if, that, okay. if a scenario like that arose, I think you would be uh, required to do disclosure under both because it's a family member, so it's nepotism, and then um, if you have an interest that involves a close family member, that could also be a conflict, so you'd be required to do both. Yeah. The annual disclosures that this handbook refers to are just those kind of generalized disclosures that we do at the beginning of every year but then if individual cases arise or situations arise then we update and we, we did that a couple of times this year for both nepotism and conflict of interest okay i just want to double check on that yeah that's a good question okay then um next one's on page 34 well 33 34 just has stuff at, at the bottom it says nothing in this this is for social media Says um, just stuff like you can't do this, you can't do that. At the bottom, it, it does say nothing in the policy shall be interpreted or applied limiting employees the right to engage in free speech activity. But I feel like a large majority of this does. Do not post images of co coworkers, customers, residents. I mean, that's anybody in the city. Um, I, I think on your free, you're allowed to do any of this stuff they're saying not to do, as long as it's not detrimental to the city. Uh, so that's, that's, page, that's page 34 toward 34, the top. It's, it's on all three of these pages. You can't, you can't do this. You can't do that. <coughs> doesn't that you can't, say? You can't talk about residents. Doesn't that say for work-related purposes? No, over here it does, and in the front and the top does. But I just want to double check on that. Yeah. yeah, and there, and this is a probably a good example of what an employee handbook does. It, it lays out um, general guidelines, and there, there is obviously. Uh, a First Amendment right to free speech and that uh, as a constitutional right that uh, is kind of all-inclusive but it does have its limitations and so what this does is attempt to just generally cover scenarios where um, through a process it could be determined that that kind of speech isn't protected speech rather it is uh, speech that would be detrimental to the city or employment um, you know I struggle for a specific example but well, I'm saying, like, say, say Jamie wants to go home on Facebook after hours mm -hmm. and write bad stuff about me. You know, I feel like that's his First Amendment right. I mean, that, can you hold that against him, or is that his First Amendment right? It depends, and, th and that I guess that's a good example. If if it's determined that that um, speech that he uh, participated in is detrimental in some way to the to his to the city and to his employment, and it can be determined. Uh, Jamie is obviously a union member, so it would be, have to be determined through a grievance process that that was violative um, of his specific employment requirements. Then it it is not free speech. So even if it's, even speech if it's true, granted. even if it's true, what he's saying. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, there are a lot of different exceptions, but <laughs> don't admit it. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, it's going to be true. But, and that's a, that's a good analysis. I mean, the handbook just gives us, so if we don't say anything, uh, if we don't have any of this, then if someone does write something uh, on social media that isn't protected free speech, that is destructive or damaging in a way, then we would never be able to discipline it or control it. Of course, we're bound to provide people uh, freedoms and, and the ability to post things, but if it crosses the line, 
we've got to have the line and the lines in the handbook. So it doesn't mean that you can't post anything. It means on a case-by-case -case basis if we determine it's a violation of your work duties, <coughs> then you can start uh, with a union employee grievance process or with non-union uh, discipline process. So if it's nothing to do with city, it's fine? Like he says, uh, I'm a whatever, whatever. I mean, if it's nothing to do with city, it's fine then? Well, you're an elected official, so you're subject to... Uh, certain um, libel and slander exceptions because well, what about that's against Mr. McAdams then? Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to get it straight. <laughs> <laughs> he knows all about it. Um, if it has nothing to do with work, it has nothing to do with this then? Probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if Jamie said, you know, okay. uh, Greg is a, and Moses on terrible, then okay. probably okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think there's only one or two more here. And the, the next one's on page 32. Yes. Um, this is ha this has to do with uh, employee cell phones and computers or technology. It's ba some of the lines say do uh, city cell phones, which it's fine with me, but I think we should let the employees know before we do this. Um, city cell phones. The following actions are forbidden. I'll summarize it. You can't use pr profane or offensive language. I mean. If it's determined that they send a text with a bad word in it, that's you know that's profane. So and it says down here toward the bottom may be subject to termination. Well, we so own their cell phone. Huh? We yeah, I know that. Pay for them. Yeah, and, I, and I'm fine with that. But I think that we should let the employees know that if this is going to be an employee handbook. Oh they, yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. need. They, to. They're going to have every every person will have the right to review this. Okay. Just make sure, I was going to make sure everybody reads. You know, sometimes people get it, like there's nothing different. You know, that's that's something pretty harsh in there, which I'm fine with it. But I mean, I think that they should know that if they're going to text even a profane <coughs> word, that I don't know if it's the case or not. But you don't open yourself up to that; they could be terminated. You know what I mean? Sure. And there'll still be a process. They'll still be afforded uh, protection through grievance process and things like that. But and and, and uh, Mayor Milan is correct. This while this is a, a unilateral contract that just automatically applies to everyone, there's still a notice requirement. So they're given copies of the handbook. They will. Uh, you know, hypothetically, and should read all of these rules and requirements that they're not. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of saying because even on here it says like employees are prohibited from sending and receiving files that are not related to work. Sure. I mean, I'm sure everybody. I mean, I don't know the statistics. I'm sure everybody's using that as their personal cell phone too. So they're sending and receiving files on the internet. So I mean, that's. Yeah, and it's obviously not something that people are going out looking for. Yeah, so that, I, was, I was just worried about someone stepping into that situation and, sure and it'll be this is kind of the generic general each specific instance would be treated individually yeah, that might be that problem. <laughs> and like the mayor said we you know there are our cell phones yeah. that we provided them so we can regulate those in a, in a limited way this is a rather limited way I think I think that's it on that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I'll entertain a uh, motion to approve the handbook. So moved. Second. I'll second it. All those in favor? Thank you, Jeff. Aye. Opposed? Motion will carry. All right. Before Thank we you. go to old business, um, you, you got something else, Dale? I do. I have uh, two items under new business, Your Honor, and then um, I think under old business we have the amended salary ordinance. Yeah. Uh, these are uh, pretty short resolutions, but they are necessary, and um, I'll get through them as quickly as I can. But these are uh, two resolutions that I've just distributed to council. If it pleases council, these will be uh, the first one is <clears throat> a rather boilerplate and generic. It's going to be the resolution enacting and adopting a supplement to the code of ordinances for the city of Lawrence Creek, Indiana. This is a uh, requirement for us to take all of the ordinance we passed the uh, whole year and then include them in the uh, codification of our code, which is done, it's published by a company called American Legal Publishing. So the hardback copies that people can uh, acquire or the online version of our code has to be constantly updated. I will give, uh, I do want to give some kudos to the clerk treasurer's office and specifically to Diane Hyde because she has uh, worked really hard to go through our code of ordinances 
and find where maybe we have a, a code, a, an ordinance in there that we've repealed, but for some reason it's still in there, something that is a typo or should be taken out. Um, and she's spent a lot of time doing that, which I think is very helpful. It was clear when we came into office that that needed to be done. We want to have both online and in physical a form uh, a current up-to-date code of ordinances the, and this we do every year just to include the ones uh, for the year so um, I'll just ask that resolution it's going to be number 7-2016 uh, that we have a vote uh, to approve that resolution which uh, adds all the ordinances we've, ordinances we've passed this year is th this is good for one year yeah, they make us do it every year. Every year? Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and basically, when Diane was going through the ordinances that we needed to clean up, she found that we had just done this every year. Um, and so, just to be consistent, I think it's something that we should do. And then we pass on to them. They update it online and physical copy, and, and then we have it done every year. Because my question was going to be, should we put building inspector and safety director and instead of a name that that's why i asked it uh that's the next one but yeah we can talk about that well uh it's a different ordinance sorry there's two of them paul and i'm sorry about that i d just dropped them on you and put your glasses on <laughs> <laughs> the first one is is seven is going to be seven and that's just the resolution enacting and adopting a supplement to the code of ordinances for the city of Lawrenceburg. uh you're talking about the next one we can cover that in All a right. second I need a motion. Yes, please. And I entertain a motion to approve resolution number 7-2016. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion will carry. Thank you, Your Honor. And, and we'll move on to uh, the, the resolution Mr. Seymour is referencing. That's going to be resolution number 2016-8, uh, which is a resolution formally designating a Title VI coordinator and an ADA director and assistant. Um, the uh, there are two federal uh, laws that uh, anti-discrimination laws that we have to follow and that are incorporated uh, to apply to us title six of the 1964 civil rights act and then the ada which passed uh, george bush passed that in 1990 basically the ada is kind of an extension of the civil rights act and because we receive federal funding we have to promise that we are uh, compliant with those federal statutes um, and to answer your question, Paul, the reason why uh, we are naming specifically the directors, and we could we could make that position. You're exactly right, and, and I didn't think of that. That's a good idea. Uh, is just because we've referenced um, these uh, positions with our documents that we already have in place, because we're already compliant with these. We do a really great job, and Mike Abden um, and Carl Freiman do a great job of making sure that we say compliant and so did Mike Clark and Mario um, that we say compliant but this just gives us a point person so if there's an ADA question they can call Diane and Carl if there's title six they can call Mike it helps us uh, with insurance too and just gives us a formal you know director and coordinator but uh, if it's the pleasure of the council we could name them specifically or we could take that out and, and just be uh, the, the position I I think and my thought on it is that I'd like it to be a position and uh, not that I have anything against any names that are on there but what happens four months from now you know somebody else has to do it because of an illness or something and we have a legal problem uh, and we've got a name in our resolution instead of just I mean we can feel a building inspectors and, and put anybody in it mm-hmm um, Point. That's just my thoughts. You ever thought about being an attorney? That's a good question. That's a good oh, question. <laughs> 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 Well, we, we can change it. Yeah. We can change it. Yeah, I don't bum that. Let's just let's, let's let me just that. reword word it so it's not so awkward, and I'll just bring it back up in January. It's not urgent, so uh, but it's good to just put you guys on notice. And I will say that um, you know Carl and Mike will be in that position now, and Diane as well, and they've been doing a great job. So I'll make those changes and bring it back. Okay. Any other? Uh these are years we got old business okay, Dell. you got salary ordinance yes sir your honor thank can, you can i do something with new business no, um, we, i'm sorry we need to do a lot like motion 
Uh, motion to table. Yeah, let's do that. Do a motion to table the ordinance uh, a resolution <coughs> 8 2016. So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion will carry. Thank you. You got, you got something? Yeah, two things that are new business. One is, I've had a few people ask me, I don't know the answer um, to this, is why did the city paint the street planners green over the artwork? Why? <laughs> yeah. Because it was all faded. Uh, they thought that the easiest way to go back and paint them was to just paint them at one color. Okay. Simple enough. Okay. And if we have volunteers that want to do some painting, re, I'm, I'm not against that. Okay. At all. If anybody else isn't against it. No. It was just uh, the quickest, easiest way to spruce it up. And then the other thing I had was in that employee handbook, um, it said that the this is for take home vehicles it says the internal revenue um, code requires taxable value for the use of employer provided vehicles be reported as additional compensation to employees the employer and employee must timely report personal use as a wage i was wondering if we did that i've never seen that before what page is that on 61. Yeah, oh it's it's for um i believe anybody but police vehicles <coughs> Jenny, do you want to help out on this one, or do you want to not? Who has a vehicle besides all one? Did they? I didn't know. What's that? Who has a vehicle besides all one? I, I don't know. Mike does. I, um, I'm not sure. To take Mike home. does. Mario does. Owen does. Johnny. It's not added to their wages. <clears throat> it's not put on their W-2. Get them from work, not... Because it, uh, it just says that um, requires the taxable value for the use of employer provided vehicles reported as additional income to employees your honor apparently it's not being done okay yeah I, didn't. I don't know if it should or not but I'll check it okay yeah thanks Susie yeah. and that was all I had there do we have do you, somebody over there uh, well I was gonna say that <coughs> the uh, the tax code is pretty specific on this so even if you have a city vehicle and you're using it for after hours for city use taking it home there is a taxable amount that has to be paid generally the city pays it on behalf of the employee so that's a wash but there is a there is a payment that has to be made according to the tax code and just point of clarification all of my um, all of my vehicle allowance is taxable it's on my w-2 well also I think though um, if we required a person to be on call and take home a, a vehicle I, I don't know why we would put additional cost onto them when we're requiring them to do that. No, I, I agree. I think that's why the, the reimbursement's there so that it's a wash. So right. it shows up, meets the technical obligation, but isn't a cost to the employee. Is there anybody that's not on call that takes one home? I know Johnny, Johnny would be on call, Bobby would be on call, Olin's on call. Who else? Brian, do you have? Do you take one home? Negative. Mario, I've called him eight or, eight or nine at night. I don't know about Mike. Are you on call, Mike? Hey, I've started calling these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I have called. Ma I have called Mario. But Aaron, for the record, you can still call me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going anywhere. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ryan will. Mike won't. All right. You got salary ordinance here, bud? Yeah. Um, we have uh, before council the uh, same salary ordinance that we presented to Board of Works, which is, of course, the uh, same salary ordinance has already been approved, voted upon by Board of Works and Council uh, in past. This is uh, that identical ordinance with just the 2% increase. Um, again, this has been this is part of the and a result of the union negotiations with the 2% increase in wages. This has been vetted and uh, double checked by Jenny Felix with HR and with the union as part of their uh, pr our process and finishing up negotiations to make sure this has been verified. So I just ask for a vote um, to um, approve the salary ordinance as already approved but with the additional two percent uh in income do you know what number this is the ordinance number 25 25 well this is a, this ordinance we've already passed 
so, oh, so this is just a this is just amended, a change yeah amended exactly. order, ordinance and I, c I don't know what number uh, it was passed as I think it was eight but I, I don't want to swear to that okay but it has already been passed so this All is right. just so we're just doing a amendment percent addition. yeah do we have to do three readings on them no then no do you want those good copy signed um Yes, I do want that, but just leave the top line because we don't know what ordinance it was, because it'll be numbered as the same, okay. with the same number as the one that was already passed. So it shouldn't have said amended on it. No, that's fine. Okay, no. I mean, it doesn't, right? No, it doesn't say it, but it doesn't. Have this it. will just replace the old one, okay. which is fine. But yes, everyone will sign it, and then just uh, tomorrow, stick the number on it, which is fine. All right, I got to uh, entertain a motion to approve the amended salary ordinance. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Roll call, please. Member Paul Seymour, Jr.? Yes. Member Tony Abbott? Yes. Member Aaron Cook? No. Member Mel Davis? Yes. Member Randy Abner? Yes. Okay. It'll pass four to one. Okay, next item is... Uh, before we get into, well, let me go ahead and do this one. Uh, calendar bid is one we tabled from last meeting because y'all wanted to see copies of of the quality of work from both uh, people that submitted. I think have y'all had a chance to look at those? Correct. Yes. Can I? Enter, I'll entertain a motion to approve a recommendation of one or the other. I'd like to make a recommendation mm -hmm. that we go with the calendar that has the. Multiple pictures on the front, a little bit more information. Can, can you tell me what the year of that one is? This one? This one's 07. What's the other one? 14. 14. Okay. You want to pass them down that way? Okay. Well, gets done. So you're going with the one from 07? All right, the one you're talking about? Yeah, I don't remember the date. All the this pictures. One, that one, right? This yeah, one up right there. there. Yeah, this is a 2007 one. All right. Got a motion to. Uh, Accept the calendar bid on, I believe that was uh, Kreider Photography. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Roll call, please. Member Paul Seymour, Jr. Yes. Member Tony Abbott? Yes. Member Aaron Cook? No. Member Mel Davis? Yes. Member Randy Abner? Yes. Okay, that will pass four to one. Okay, we'll take the bid from Kreider Photography. All right, uh, before we take comments from the audience, I got two small things. I uh, just want to make you guys aware of uh, the January meetings are both on, and, and the audience as well. The two January meetings that we have scheduled, uh, that are usually the first and third Mondays are both holidays. Um, I have uh, conflicts on both the Tuesdays after it, so I'm proposing that we meet, uh, uh, meet on January 4th, which is a Wednesday, and January 19th, or 18th, which, which is a Wednesday. Um, please, if you guys have any conflicts with that, let me know as soon as possible, or that's what we'll advertise. Um, but we can look for other, other dates and such. Um, I gave you copies of uh, the upcoming meetings with dates, so you'll have those for your reading pleasure. Um, we will also be uh, meeting on the 4th prior to our meeting at 5 o'clock uh, with an open meeting to discuss nothing but the Speedway lease RFP. We want to finish that up and get it sent out. So we'll, we'll finish that up on the 4th at 5 o'clock, provided we get it done in that hour. If we don't, we'll meet again. And the other item I gave you was a list of uh, the um, grants that have been uh, either accepted or or applied for this year. If you have any questions on them, what they're for, what they pertain to, uh, Judy would be happy to entertain your questions. She's got all the information. Um, just wanted to make you aware of that. And now at this time, I'll take comments from the audience. Uh -huh. Going once. You wish you want to get a Gene, get up there and sing us a song. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not very encouraging. 
May. You should have said I'm thinking of something negative to say. I think you guys did a great job this year. He's older than me. Collect your 20 at the door, young lady. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'll accept a, a motion to uh, oh, approve God. the claims. Moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So move. Second. We'll see you next year. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Merry Christmas, everybody. Johnny and Jenny. I need Johnny and Jenny. Johnny and Jenny. Okay. You too, man. Thank you. Okay. Okay. We can do that. I'll get it done. Okay. It was a contact over there. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Uh, you're welcome to the contract. I'm surprised you felt when we first scheduled together. Yeah, I did. I just didn't know there was someone else I should talk to. I can just, I can just talk to Andy. Nobody goes. Okay. No, I'll get it done. I'll get it done. Thanks, Bobby. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas. More, do more after. Hey, Jeff. You're working on it. I mean, it's. Uh, I will get it done this week. I've just got. I've got a hearing in New Albany. Absolutely. Yeah, we're excited.